Greetings and thank you for coming along to this Inventor Tips and Tricks video, more of a tutorial about adaptivity, as fast and as simple as possible. Why? Because adaptivity can be used on a massive scale, or it can be used in a very basic way, to do very basic things which save you some time, and that's what I'm going to focus on here. You might have heard of adaptivity, you might have heard it mentioned in your office, you might have seen it in Inventor somewhere, and referenced somewhere in the buttons in the dialog boxes and you might be thinking what is it can i use this yes you can it's brilliant adaptivity can be described in two different ways the first way the most i guess the most practical way of describing what adaptivity is it's adaptivity is when a part file its size its position or its its you know shape is in some way controlled by another part file. It doesn't have its own dimensions. Its, dim its size is controlled by the dimensions of another part. Another way of describing how adaptivity can be of a benefit is it's a way of capturing and managing design change. So a good example of that is this scissors assembly that comes with Inventor. Now this scissors assembly has a clip here, a little spring clip, which fits into the hole on the handle. Now that needs to be a snug fit. At the moment, it's not adaptive, which means in the future, if somebody was to make a design change to this handle and increase the size of the hole, you would then have to remember on to edit the clip itself and then change the size of this outer diameter to suit the size of the new hole. So you're making two changes. If it was adaptive, what you would be able to do is link the size of the clip to the size of the hole. So you would make one change. The size of the hole would then drive the size of the clip it's adaptive, the clip is adaptive to the hole. So that would be one way of creating adaptivity, a very basic way, but we can use that to, to, to many different examples, to all kinds of extremes. So I'm gonna do a very, very quick and basic example of adaptivity on this assembly here. So what I've got is a carburetor intake plate. It's just a very basic plate with four holes in it, if I'm honest. And I'm gonna design a gasket which sits on top of it. Now the gasket is going to be an exact size, well, it's, it's going to be the exact size of the plate below and it's going to have the four holes in it. That's what it's going to be. And it needs to be adaptive. I could, with it, without adaptivity, I would have to manually take dimensions for the fillets, for the length and the width, for the whole size and the whole positions, and I would have to separately model the gasket to those exact sizes, drop it into the assembly and then constrain it onto the plate and hope that I got the sizes right. Or I could use adaptivity to just do it for me. So this is one way of using adaptivity, which pretty much describes all of its benefits and all of its uses. So we're gonna start by creating a new file, the new gasket part file. So I'm gonna click create in the assembly, and then we're gonna call this gasket, click okay. And then we're gonna just drop the first, uh, we're gonna drop the gasket into the assembly and that's it done. All right, next step. We need to create the sketch, the very first sketch for the gasket. Now, this is when things start to become adaptive. So we click Start New Sketch, and instead of just picking one of the standard work planes to start sketching on, instead, we can just hover our cursor over, I don't know, over the, the, the top of the face, go to Select Other, and then pick that face there. That creates our first sketch for the gasket, and that sketch is on top of this face, more so, it's adaptive to this face. So if this thickness here, so if this plate thickness from here to here was to increase and this face was to move up, our sketch, because it's adaptive to that face, would move up with it. How do we know it's adaptive though? How do you know that you've created that adaptivity? Well, if you look in your Inventor browser on the left-hand side, that work plane there is the work plane our sketch is actually based on. It's We're sketching on that work plane. That work plane has a little symbol next to it a little red arrow and a blue arrow, that symbolizes adaptivity. The work plane is adaptive and our part is an adaptive part. So whenever you do have adaptivity in your part file, you will see this little symbol here and that tells you that it's working. Okay, so keeping this as simple as I can. First off, I'm just gonna switch off this work plane because it's fugly. Get that off. Okay, so the size and the position of the gasket. Okay, so just again, just to reiterate, without adaptivity, what you would need to do is just start drawing the gasket, you would have to put the sizes in, you'd have to draw circles, you know, manually dimension the whole centers together, but we're not gonna do that. To create our adaptivity, we can use project geometry, and we can project edges and faces from other part files into this part. So I can say project geometry, 
and I can pick the entire face and that will project the edges and the lines of that face into our part file. That's giving us a sketch profile to extrude. That's what it's done. So we can finish the sketch. We don't need to place any dimensions. We can just say for this gasket, we're gonna extrude this profile that we've retrieved, that we've pulled from the face in the part below. So we can then just give it an extent. Let's say it's gonna be a two millimeter gasket and that's a bit thick. Let's say one, click okay. And let's change its color so we can differentiate it from below. Uh, let's make it black. Oh my God. Oh, that's why can't you give me a black color without it being gritty and looking terrible? Never mind. Okay, but there's our gasket extruded. Now our gasket is exactly it's it's been designed using the sketch from the feature below so it is completely controlled by this part here and that's the adaptivity we can also see that in the extrusion in our browser the extrusion is adaptive because its sketch is spawned from the part below so if you click return you'll now see that we've got the two parts in the assembly this part is driving this part here let's test it so I'm going to edit the first part the original part and let's look for this extrusion here is the one that controls the size of the holes you can see that well this is uh, daft units this is inches so if we edit this value here and then change the size of the hole let's reduce the size of the hole to 0 0.08 okay finish that sketch you can see when we finish this part it changes the size of our gasket because these holes here are controlled by the holes in the plate below. And that's adaptivity. That's pretty much it. I mean we can we can change the size of the, the plate itself if we want to. Now this this plate was actually modeled by an absolute clampet and he didn't plug in symmetrical sketches so you can see the holes aren't actually or it's not brilliant. But there we go, there's our gasket. It is automatically changed to suit the size of the plate below. When the plate changes, the plate is controlling the size of our gasket via adaptivity, and that will change to suit as well. So as fast as I can, I probably rambled a bit too much there and repeated a few things, but just to try and get the point across, that's adaptivity as fast and as simple as I can make it. You can take that to all kinds of extents though. You can have all kinds of different parts controlling other parts via projected geometry. You can go to, to great extremes with this to control design changes. There's a couple of things you need to be aware of though. First off, when you do project edges from one part to the other, if that edge is something that could potentially change, like for example, if we were to create a fillet on this edge here and remove the edge that had been projected, you're gonna have problems. That's why some companies don't like the idea of adaptivity. It can easily be broken by removing lines and edges and faces which have been used to project themselves into other parts that can cause issues. But it's not the end of the world. What you can do is you can just right click on the part file, just untick adaptive, and that will remove the adaptivity temporarily. You can then right click on it and then bring the adaptivity back. You're re-enabling the adaptivity at some point in the future. So you do have options such as that to control it. Okay, that's as basic as I can make it. Uh, hopefully it was useful to somebody out there. If it was, please press like on the video. If you liked it, please press dislike. If it was a bit too vague, which it might have been, I'm not too sure. Uh, but put some comments down below. If you've got anything to say, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, thank you very much and cheery bye.